Okay, so um, Toby's giving the first talk this morning, but I just wanted to kick things off by saying a few words about the context of, context of this workshop and why we've collected the particular group of people we have this weekend and what our aims are. So this workshop is run under the auspices of a Leverhulme funded three-year project with the same name, Population Ethics Theory and Practice. So as that title suggests, our aims in the three-year project decompose into two halves, the theory half and the practice half. On the theory side, we're doing abstract moral philosophy. So there's this abstract theoretical question that ethical theorists have been talking about quite a bit over the last 20 or 30 years. We'll hear more about it in particular in Theron's talk later this morning. This is what we call the question of which is the right, quote, population axiology, or if you're comparing two states of affairs which differ from one another over how many people ever get to live, what are the principles that ought to be governing that comparison? So as I said, that's been much discussed among moral philosophers for a couple of decades. It's a notoriously difficult question, or at any rate, it's notoriously difficult to achieve anything like consensus on this question. David's nodding, but he's, he's been the, one of the prominent defenders of one of the po candidate population axiologies that's taken most seriously, but it's not that there's a majority in favour of this view or any of the others. So one of the things we want to do in the project on the theoretical side is contribute to advancing that theoretical debate. However, at the same time, the other main motivation for our project was, it seems to us at any rate, and we'd be interested to hear your perspectives on this, that there are several areas of pressing national and international policy importance, like climate change, overpopulation, healthcare prioritisation, the evaluation of existential risks, to name just a few, in which what one thinks about what one ought to do in practice in the real world is prima facie fairly likely to depend, and possibly to depend quite sensitively, on what one thinks about this theoretical question in the background, the normative question of which is the right population axiology. So we've got a bit of a problem in being undecided about which is the right population axiology, because we have to, we have to act now in the real world on all of these areas and we need to work out what the principles are that are going to govern our decisions. The current state of play on the practical side, it strikes us, is one of, to a great extent, disconnect between theory and practice. The theoretical questions on the one hand and the practical questions on the other hand are largely discussed by disjoint groups of people. So you have the, the moral philosophers, and I'll include economists like David as honorary moral philosophers for this purpose, <laughs> um, doing the abstract theory, but largely talking in very abstract terms, and with some exceptions, including some of David's own work, doing relatively little to try to connect what, that abstract theory to the real world. So what would be the real world implications of this or that answer to the axiological question? On the practical side, you have lots of people, generally not philosophers, so scientists, economists, campaigners, people in pubs, um, talking about these important practical issues, but generally in a way that's not linked to the background theory. So one of the main things we're trying to do in the practice half of our project is build bridges across the wiggly red line that I've got on this diagram, connect the theory to the practice, and try to, try to raise the standard of the debate on all of these pressing issues. So the first thing we want to do in this workshop is collect together some philosophers and representatives of various non-philosophy fields. So we've got Brian as a climate scientist, David as an economist, as well as a, a practitioner of the, the theoretical side, Carter as a lawyer, and Roger as a population campaigner, to have a, a cross-disciplinary dialogue on these debates and see if we can make more, make more clear how the connections would work out from the theoretical half to the practical half. We also, want to go, we also want to have a go at setting priorities for future research. So if we aim over the next, say in our case, over the next three years of our project to contribute to raising the standard of the debate and making clearer what the connections between ethical theory and real-world practice are going to look like, where are the most promising avenues for research? Which questions would we be, should we be looking at in particular? We have our own ideas about what the answer to that priority question might be, but the other thing we'd like to do at this workshop this weekend is to get your perspectives on that. So especially the, the very last session tomorrow in the round table, we'll be inviting several people to offer us their reflections on where the, where the ripe fruit looks to be in terms of future research possibilities. Okay, so I'll be quiet now and pass over to Toby for the first talk in a minute. Um, so I'm going to say one last thing. So generally speaking, for, for this workshop, we're not trying to resolve this theoretical issue. Um, we'd have no hope of doing so and it would take far too long. But in the first two talks, we'll say just enough to try to give those who aren't familiar with this debate, a flavour of 
the kind of terms in which philosophers tend to talk about this issue, so we can set out some framework and terminology. The remainder of the talks, including my own this afternoon, will be more on the practice side. Okay, so thank you. Over to Toby. Thank you.